It shouldn't look like this. That's the first thing that hits you when you place the newest images of 3i Atlas next to what every comet playbook says should happen near the sun. Fresh off conjunction, the virtual telescope project stacked long exposures and pulled a faint, diffuse body out of the moonlit glare. The shape is there, the motion is there, and yet the big question refuses to go away. If something is pushing this object hard enough to bend its path beyond gravity's script, where is the giant, blinding fog of gas and dust that should be wrapped around it like a spotlight? That simple tension, motion that implies a powerful engine and pictures that don't scream it, lit the fuse. Some observers see a classic, if subtle, cometary envelope. Others insist there's no obvious, stadium-sized shroud. Same sky, same night, two readings. That's not a contradiction to fear. It's the exact kind of scientific friction that makes this story worth following. Non-gravitational acceleration sounds like jargon until you picture a marble drifting across a table with no hand on it. Gravity alone draws a clean curve. Add the tiniest extra nudge and, at first, nothing looks dramatic. But at interplanetary distances, a whisper turns into tens of thousands of kilometers. That's the claim around perihelion. A small outward push away from the sun, paired with a sideways component that skews the trajectory. In the moment, the numbers feel microscopic. Over weeks, they become an offset you can't shrug off. The default explanation is older than astronomy textbooks outgassing. Sunlight warms buried ices, pressure rises and jets fire like tiny thrusters. The physics is simple. Mass shoots one way, the nucleus slides the other. But simplicity is not the same as sufficiency. If the push is real and strong, the exhaust should be spectacular. Rewind to mid-July. Hubble caught Atlas in a teardrop cocoon of dust a clean, unambiguous coma at solar distances where comets often begin to breathe. No controversy there. The puzzle is the timing. If the real kick showed up around closest approach, the amount of stuff that would need to come off to generate that push is not subtle. It's not wispy, not borderline, not maybe the seeing wasn't great tonight. It's the kind of outflow that ought to spill into a huge, bright cloud any serious instrument can't miss. That's why people keep comparing Atlas to familiar control cases, like a routine comet with a poster-perfect tail, and asking why this one looks like a question mark while still acting like a rocket. If you're feeling the pull to jump straight to sci-fi, hold that thought. The bridge between weird comet and engineered object is built out of measurements, not mood. Here, where the math turns from neat to noisy, early analyses link a big object estimate to a small but persistent acceleration and then ask, if jets are doing this, how much mass had to leave? Run that through the standard momentum bookkeeping and you land on a number that makes everyone's eyebrows rise, billions of tons over a tight window, not spread over years, not smeared across a lazy arc around the sun, concentrated. If that's the engine, the exhaust should be the headline. So far, it is. That doesn't prove the engine isn't outgassing. It tells you the burden of proof has shifted. Extraordinary claims don't always mean aliens. Sometimes they just mean the real physics isn't the simple version we teach. Color became the next spark. Claims appeared that Atlas's appearance leaned into blues that feel counterintuitive. Viewers hear blue and think hot, electric, engineered. But spectra are messy in the wild. Ionized gases radiate in bands that don't care about our intuition. And viewing geometry can amplify or mute features in ways that fool the eye. A camera can be honest and still make you jump to a conclusion. That's why disciplined observers keep their language careful. Potential shifts across filters, intriguing signatures, trending measurements, interesting, not verdicts. Mystery is a fuel source, but it burns longer when you ration it. If you want a compass through the noise, follow the instruments. Large telescopes reported oddities that are genuinely worth your attention. Unexpected nickel lines rising earlier than you'd expect. Hints of nascent CN and polarimetric behavior that doesn't slot neatly into the dusty snowball stereotype. Unusual doesn't mean unnatural. It means you pull on the thread. The best part of this story is that we don't need to wait years for better data. A coordinated campaign is already tightening the net, stacking astrometry, cross-checking photometry, and bringing the error bars down. That's how the is it really accelerating question becomes a chart instead of a food fight. So what would actually settle the argument? Picture December rolling in and the object sliding to its safe closest pass from Earth, 
far calm, no threat. Hundreds of eyes watch. If a massive coma blooms, you get the conservative headline. Extreme comet behavior surprising physics of venting. Lesson learned. If the coma stays modest while the push stays firm, then the conversation tilts. Not into fantasy, but into hard alternatives. Dust poor jets we haven't modeled well. Asymmetric outflows pinned to unusual surface chemistry. Non-thermal mechanisms that don't leave the luminous fingerprints we're hunting for. And past those, the timid door cracks open to non-natural hypotheses. Not as a proclamation, but as a question you are no longer allowed to ignore if the data keeps pointing that way. The scale is part of why people care. This isn't a tiny flake like Aumuamua that can sneak weirdness past our instincts. Atlas is large by interstellar standards. Massive objects resist acceleration. If something is nudging a big body and you can measure the nudge, you pay attention. The timing adds drama. Perihelion is where comets strut, where sunlight should drive the brightest, loudest effects. If the big kick happened there, then the show me the exhaust challenge is fair. And if that show doesn't arrive, the audience hasn't been unreasonable. The universe has been. There's also a human reason this story won't let go. We don't get many visitors from the deep dark between stars. When they come, they break our habits. Amuamua taught humility. Small forces can hide in plain sight. Borisov taught comfort. Not every interstellar guest is a puzzle box. Atlas sits in the tension between those lessons. Too big for easy shrugs, too messy for easy claims. That's a good place to be if you care about truth more than victory laps. Discomfort is how knowledge grows muscle. Let's zoom in on what viewers should take to heart as the days tick by. First, there is fresh imagery and it will keep coming. You're not betting your curiosity on yesterday's screenshots. Second, there is a specific, technical claim about a small but real non-gravitational push. That claim is falsifiable. It lives or dies on the back of measurements we can repeat. Third, the famous billions of tons line is not a press release from a space agency. It's a calculation chain to assumptions. The moment better mass estimates, better jet speeds, or better geometry arrive, that number shifts. Fourth, the color gossip is fun, but spectra beat vibes. As the signal-to-noise improves, dramatic language will either solidify into confirmed features or evaporate. Both outcomes are worth watching. Now, zoom out. Why does any of this matter beyond the memes and the suspense? Because it's one of the cleanest live lessons in how science actually behaves under pressure. You get the urge to jump to answers colliding with the discipline to wait for them. You get lively public voices that are willing to argue from first principles and careful teams that would rather stack nights of data than one night of headlines. You get an object that refuses to be boring and a community that refuses to be sloppy. That's the show. That's the value. That's what your brain gets to experience in real time instead of reading about it 10 years later in a textbook paragraph. So where does that leave us tonight? With an object that came from somewhere we can't yet name, behaving in ways we can measure and debate, and a calendar that will force clarity whether we're ready or not. If a towering coma blooms, we'll learn how a giant interstellar comet hides its noise until the exact moment it doesn't. If it doesn't bloom and the push remains, we will have to widen the menu. Maybe the jets are dust poor and efficient. Maybe the surface is tricking our instruments. Maybe the engine is something we haven't modeled because we've never had to. And yes, Maybe the conversation finally admits that technology is not a forbidden word. It's simply the hypothesis of last resort when the natural cupboard is truly empty. Until then, treat every new frame like a clue and every loud claim like a question. Mystery is not the enemy here. It's the instrument turning the volume up on our curiosity. We're not watching a threat approach. We're watching the scientific method grind its gears on a stubborn, gorgeous problem that fell into our sky at the perfect moment. The images will sharpen. The numbers will tighten. The story will either contract into a beautiful, natural explanation or expand into a chapter we didn't think we'd be writing this decade. Either way, you'll get an answer worth the wait and a journey that was never about fear. It was about earning the right to say we truly saw what was there.